Benton, thank you so much for reading and for giving us the background of today's Palm Sunday. As we said before, today is Palm Sunday. No, we are not looking at the inside of our palms to make any predictions of what this week might look like. And no, we are not planning our next vacation under the palm trees either. Instead, we are entering Holy Week, reflecting on Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem. And we also conclude our covenant series during Lent called Covenant. During the last couple of Sundays, we took a deeper look on the many covenants God made to us through Scripture, the promises God made the promises God kept because God is loyal and God's love is forever. Today on Good Palm Sunday, many of us want to skip ahead to Easter. We want to avoid the agony and the terror of what this following week is going to bring. We do not want to recall the painful events. Yes, it is painful to hear how Jesus' friends failed. And I can identify with the characters in the story and wonder, who am I this year around? Is it me who lied and betrayed Jesus? Is it me who shouts Hosanna today and crucify him, crucify him on Good Friday? It is painful to listen to the accounts of Jesus' suffering and brutal death. There's already too much suffering and death in this world, and on Sunday morning, we want to forget it all and just feel good. As I mentioned before, and as you know already, just in the last two weeks, seven days in a span, two mass shootings, and we ask, why? Why all this death in this world? And then, we don't want to hear about Jesus' death either. Too painful, too dark, too somber. Let's skip it all and look ahead at the Easter egg hunt and the wonderful fragrance of the Easter lilies and the hallelujahs. Why can't we just skip this week? We can't. Because Holy Week is the most important week for us Christians. The wonderful transformation from death to life. And we can only experience this if we stop at each station, take it in, Listen, imagine that we were there and wonder what has the story got to do with us now in the year 2021. And then we realize that it is not death, but life which has the last word because love is stronger than death. New life and light are always more powerful than darkness, no matter how dark it is, because we are Easter people, but we still have to get there. Did you notice today's sermon title? Just go to the back of the front of the bulletin. The title is, What Happens When You Assume? According to the dictionary, to assume means to think that something is true, or probably true, without knowing that it is true. When we assume, we think we know the outcome. We have heard the story of Palm Sunday for years and years and years, and Quentin just mentioned 38 years at this faith community. Every year, on the Sunday before Easter, we hear Jesus entering Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, people waving palms and shouting Hosanna. We imagine what it must be like. A parade, a protest, 
a funeral march, because all of this is what Palm Sunday is about. A parade because Jesus is welcomed like a king, but riding on a donkey. A protest because people are gathering and cheering for Jesus and not pleasing the Roman occupying army. A funeral march because Jesus knew what was going to happen and how this journey was ending. The story of Palm Sunday is so important that we hear it in all four Gospels. Mark's Gospel is the first one written, but the second one in our Bible. Out of the 16 chapters in Mark's Gospel, six of them are about the last seven days. Six chapters dedicated to one week, and the first ten chapters to about three years of Jesus' ministry. That's why Mark's gospel is sometimes called the passion story with an introduction. Mark's gospel, which we heard today of the Palm Sunday story, is slightly different. If you would take all four accounts next to each other and compare them between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Side by side, you might be surprised how they differ. The framework is the same, but the details might surprise you. In Mark's gospel, there's only one donkey. In Mark's gospel, there are many more details what happens before Jesus is in Jerusalem than actually what happens at Palm Sunday. In Mark's gospel, there are no children mentioned at all. In Mark's gospel, after Jesus enters Jerusalem, he goes into the temple, looks around, and leaves again. That's weird. If you look even closer, we find more specific details, which are only found in Mark. In verse 3, Jesus tells the disciples to say to the owner of the animal, the Lord needs it and brings it back. Really? When and how is Jesus planning to return the donkey? I don't know. Verse 8. Did you actually notice that there are no palms in today's Palm Sunday story? It says right here that the people spread the leafy branches which they cut from the trees. Leafy branches, not the palms we have here. And then in verse 11, the last verse Quentin read for us this morning, why is Jesus, after he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple, looked around at everything, as it was already late. Late for what? Late in the evening? Late for dinner? Why is it late? Went out to Bethany with the twelve. Why? Makes me wonder. The more I read about the Bible stories, the more questions I have. Because it doesn't make any sense to me. This today's Mark's gospel, which we read ever so often on Palm Sunday, for me has more questions than answer. Maybe that's why we shouldn't assume. We think we know what's going on. We think we've heard it all. We glance through it and overlook how God is at work. I believe in our busy world that sometimes how we overlook small details. Only if we take time, if we look deeper, if we focus, we experience the still speaking God. Then we may wonder, we ask questions, and hopefully we have more than just easy answers. Because I believe this is what our faith is all about. We are allowed to have questions. And together, we hopefully 
find answers. Our faith is a mystery, just like life, and needs to be discovered again and again. The more questions I have, the less answers I got. And then I make the discovery, faith is not about getting answers. Faith is daring to have questions. Faith is to be on the journey and to discover what God has in store for us all. Faith is a mystery, just like what's going to happen in the next couple of days and week ahead. And God? God has surprises for us. And I invite you, join us for the journey. Read what is happening. Imagine being part of the story and stop and pause and wonder and discover God in it all. Look for God in the details. Don't get stuck with the questions. Don't try to find all logical answers because at least I don't find logical answers in my faith. And when I'm going through the Bible, I see many more questions and wondering and awe than logical answers at all. Because our God, the still speaking God, shows up when we least expect it. And our gospel and love doesn't really make much sense. But this is where our hope is built nonetheless. Throughout scripture, God shows up <clears throat> and it doesn't make much sense. Take Abraham and Sarah, who are well in their retirement age and probably just walking in their walking chairs. And then, out of the blue, out of the blue God promises them a son. Oh, Moses. I bet Moses' career plan did not include to lead his people out of slavery. The prophets? They did not sign up to speak God's truth. Mary? Remember Mary? She was more than puzzled when the angel told her she is giving birth to Jesus. No, whenever God shows up, it doesn't make much sense. Just look at the events of next week and the big surprise next Sunday. Because God... Our generous God is not about making sense, but about giving life and being there for us and with us and carrying us through. Yes, we have heard the story before. We know what is going to happen. But nevertheless, don't just assume because we all know what happens when you assume. Pause. Wonder. Pay attention to the details and experience how God is at work in the story and in our lives as well. And then be transformed by the biggest surprise ever. And let me tell you, you can only feel and experience a transformation if you are there step by step the whole way through. And then, after we've heard all the story, celebrate with us next week, next Easter, next week on Easter morning and feel and experience that the biggest surprise is yet to come. And you are right. True love doesn't make much sense. But God loves anyway. Come back, please, next Sunday. But don't forget to tune in on Thursday and be here on Friday to be part of the whole story because only then you can celebrate the hallelujahs. Amen. <laughs>